Leon in Mexico, the site of the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League final. Not only the first leg, but the second leg. It's Classico Regio 120, the ultimate super Classico finale this 2019 Champions League campaign. Monterey and Tigris meeting for this second leg tonight at the Steel Giant in Monterey. What an exciting atmosphere we have tonight. Over 53,000 packed into this stadium that opened just four years ago. So 1-0 aggregate as we enter the second leg and we say hello to you. Mike Watts, Tyler Terrence on hand for this one. And this is one of those finals that carries just a little more weight given all that goes into it. Tyler, let's start with Monterey. Nico Sanchez scores shortly around halftime in the first leg. What did you like beyond the score line about what they did do in that first leg? Well, for the first time this entire tournament, and really we could even take it a step further in the entire season for Tigris, we saw a side that just took Tuca Ferretti's team to a different level, and you saw them not be able to accomplish what they want to be able to accomplish, and that's get the ball out wide, be dangerous, get Eduardo Vargas, Ener Valencia involved, and those are two guys who were really in terrific form, and Ener Valencia did not play a great game. Monterey did an excellent job of condensing the entire field pushing them out wide and just forcing this Tigres team to be something that they weren't. It was just a phenomenal tactical job from Diego Alonso, but only 90 minutes. Let's turn the tide here to Tuca Ferretti's side of Tigres. This is a side that has never won an international championship, and Rayados fans will let them know that. That in mind, Tyler, what did you take away from their first leg performance that makes you optimistic now? Well, the optimistic part for Tuca Ferretti's side is that it's only 1-0, right? I mean, it easily could have been 2-3, possibly even 4. Nico Sanchez hits the post, and this is a Tigres side that did not play a great game. They looked a bit more dangerous in the second half after they brought on Andre Pierre Gignac and Jurgen Dom. But make no mistake about it, that was mostly Gignac coming on, and Jurgen Dom was not nearly good enough. He's going to get the start tonight. But for this Tigres side, it's one goal you've proven before that you can go into the Steel Giant and get a result in a final in the 2017 Apertura, like you mentioned, Mike. So there's a lot of positives to take into it. However, you still need to put it together on the field. And what they did in the first leg was not nearly convincing enough to say that they are going to go ahead and win it. But that's the best part of these types of situations, right, Mike? You get another opportunity. You get another leg. And Andre Pierzyniak is going to be on the bench tonight. However, he is going to come on early if they are not to get that opening equalizer goal. Well, we saw it in the hours leading up. 90 degrees it is very humid in northern Mexico as well. A slight crosswind in the steel giant, they affectionately call it. And the lights are about to turn on in a special fashion. These 53,000 fans are whipped up and ready to go. 53,000 are here. A million more will say that they were. As the lights turning on in spectacular fashion in Monterey.
say the very most poignant moments of a final of a big event can occur shortly before. And whether it's hearing Freddie Mercury or it's seeing these amazing <laughs> fireworks and lights, Tyler, this 120th edition of this Monterey Derby, the, the Northern Classic, carries all this weight. It, it's the second final they've seen in three years' time between the two. After 43 years without a final, it, it goes without saying, this is special for everybody in attendance. I think everybody watching. This is special for everybody, and Tom Marshall of ESPN came out with a great article, and Andre Pierzyniak said it best. This isn't a Classico. This is a Super Classico. This is River Plate Boca Juniors. This is Galatasaray over in Turkey. This is the type of game, okay, where everybody in the city of Monterey, you've heard it before, and I'll say it again. Nobody in Monterey cares about two teams other than Monterey and Tigres. Rayados and Tigres are what they live, breathe, eat, drink, sleep, dream of. And now they have an opportunity on an international stage in a final to go head to head for a spot in the FIFA Club World Cup. Take a look at Tigres, right? A side that has never won this trophy before, that has gone into the Steel Giant and taken a trophy from their hands. And a hashtag, champions in your own house, that basically went viral in Mexico for more or less two years. And then Monterrey on the other side, three times champions of this tournament. They've gotten the better of Tigres on a number of different occasions. This series is almost dead even. This is one of the best rivalries, not only in CONCACAF, but in the entire world. If you think that these players haven't been dreaming of this moment since the draw came out and Tigres and, and Rayados were on opposite sides of the bracket, you are fooling yourself. This is going to be an absolute just unbelievably special night. And you saw that from the emotion, the raw emotion. When the 90 minutes were through back at Estado Universitario last week, the energy decibels went up. Everybody was excited. Not who El Guzman was telling everybody, keep going, keep this going all the way until next week. I mean, they have been waiting for this moment literally for eight days. It's finally here. This is going to be 90 minutes, possibly beyond, of just bluts and glory just for one team, though. Yeah, they say a house divided cannot stand. Monterey is proving that wrong this week. It has been jerseys all around town, according to Andre Pierzyniak, with that trophy, which right now is in the dark, will soon be illuminated and spotlighted for all to see in the CONCACAF region as the fireworks and the lights continue to display in the steel giant. Tyler, you think about the importance of of individuals in this game, you think about units in this game, and everyone talks about how in finals, being clinical in front of goal can be decisive. But in your mind, the midfield and how Monterey handles the Tigris midfield in particular, given what happened in the first leg, is equally as crucial. The middle of the field for Diego Alonso is nothing short of spectacular in terms of going out and just executing a tactical game plan. Carlos Rodriguez and Celso Ortiz, who to be quite honest with you, Mike, I was surprised that he even got the nod for the starting 11 in the first leg of the final. He's 30 years old, though he's a veteran, and he knows exactly what Diego Alonso wants in the middle of the field. They condensed everything, and it's not only just the middle of the field in terms of the midfielders in general for Monterey, but it's the middle of the field in terms of Nico Sanchez and Stefan Medina, and Medina had to step in for Cesar Montes, right? Who you know, is not gonna, he's going to be available off the bench tonight, but Medina, the Colombian, and Nico Sanchez, when Carlos Rodriguez and Celso Ortiz step up, they step up right with them and make it so unbelievably difficult for Guido Pissarro, for Rafael Carioca, and even when Eduardo Vargas comes back to get the ball, to turn to do anything. I mean, this Tigres team looked all out of sorts. Now let's go to the Tigres side of things. Guido Pissarro and Carioca have to find a way to connect the dots and move up the field. Everything was east, west, and south. You have to find a way to go north, or at the very least, go northeast or northwest because everything that they did was either in a lateral or negative fashion. So the middle of the field for me, Mike, is going to be where this game is won and lost. And that might be obvious and you might be sitting at home saying, well, that's the case for most games. But particularly at a game of this caliber with this much emotion riding on it. I mean, you saw the entire 90 minutes was basically the first 10 minutes of any football game where it was just nonstop rapid motion and Make no mistake about it, Diego Alonso is not going to sit back and just hope that this one goal is going to get it done because the chances are it's not going to get it done. So both of these teams, I think, are to go after each other. It's a super classico. We're going to expect absolute fireworks while this light show is still going on right now. Well, the trophy has been carried off, and in about two hours, we're going to see who's carrying it around the stadium tonight. Tickets very highly valued for this match. We'll run you a lot of pesos to get inside the building tonight. There is not an empty seat in the joint, nor should there be. A match of this magnitude, and, and when you listen, 
whether it be Diego Alonso or Tuca Ferretti, the managers, the stars from both teams, Hugo Ayala, Andre Pierzyniak, they talk about this being the two best teams in CONCACAF, and it's one thing to battle that out over a 16-team tournament, but truth be told, they are both top four and already in the Ligia in League MX, and of course, they do all that while concurrently making this run. Both of them have a legitimate chance at a double, and equally so, you could say, both could claim to be the best team in CONCACAF and the perfect representative for the Club World Cup. They are the perfect representative, both of them. I think both of them would represent CONCACAF in, in the utmost of, of terrific fashion. But at the end of the day, Mike, if Tigres falls short in this tournament and Tigres don't win the Clausura, is it a success? Can you, can, you, can you look at this season and say, well, we did the best we could, but we fell short again? That's not good enough. It's not good enough for a club of this level, and especially with somebody like Andre Pierre Gignac, who's proven to be the best goal scorer in this league since he's come in a few years ago. You have all of the pieces. You've spent all the money, so has Monterey, to go ahead and get that final International Cup. And I would venture to say this. I think that this tournament, this final, right here, right now, means more to them than winning the Ligia. It just does. If you haven't done it before, and it's a trophy that continues to just skirt its way around you on a number of different occasions when you've gotten to the final, most recently against Pachuca in 2017. This is what matters to them right now. And you know what? Monterey, you know, all the credit in the world to them, but they have their work cut out for them and then some because this Tigres team, given the fact that they just conceded one of the only goals they conceded at home against Monterey and lost that leg, they've already done it here before. I, I just want it to start already. This is going to be phenomenal. Jurgen Dom saying this week, this win could confirm us as a dynasty. He said, winning or not, biggest team of the decade in Mexico. I think Club America, Chivas having won. Certainly this Monterey side would have a very solid argument against that claim. But Tigres feels they have done everything but carry this kind of trophy home. Mexican team has won each and every edition of the CONCACAF Champions League and in this newest edition it's been as difficult to win as ever gone the group stage straight to the round of 16 and in total it takes eight games of your very best to take that trophy home and if you think back to the very beginning of this tournament Monterey nearly didn't make it out of the first round they didn't have a shot on target in the first game against Salvador inside Alianza. They escape with a 1-0, and what an incredible turn of fate that could be in history if they do get their fourth Champions League crown. I mean, isn't it amazing that we can sit here and be talking about a Monterey side that has a 1-0 lead thanks to Nico Sanchez, who was a villain, the GOAT, everything all combined into one in that second leg against Alianza. And I was actually, I woke up to your voice. I was falling asleep. I had a long day during that game. And I woke up to your voice because you're talking about how you need a psychology degree to figure out whether or not Nico Sanchez is going to go left, going to go right. But, I mean, what a fixture we have in store. Monterey have done all the dirty work to get here. Monterey have just gotten better and better. Tigres have dominated all three teams they've faced so far, but they face a deficit tonight. Leg number two, the Champions League final in 2019. The ultimate derby, the Super Classico, Classico Regio 120. Tigres and Monterey take the field. Tigres and Monterey just moments away, and the anticipation is built to a fever pitch. Champions League fever kind of pitch. 
as Egris and Monterey. One outstanding atmosphere. Take this atmosphere, compare it to any in the world. You'd be hard pressed to find many differences. As the photos include the entire team, a moment to capture and remember forever for 18 men who we'll all hope that they are the ones to take Tigris through. There's the lineup for Monterey. And for a team that won 1-0 last time out, last week, you don't need to make a lot of changes. No, you don't need to make any changes. And again, it's it's the center backs. It's Stefan Medina and Nico Sanchez who I'm going to be keeping an eye on because, again, it's not the normal center back pairing you're used to, but Medina, the Colombian, does an excellent job, and he was terrific. Clean sheet on the road at Estado Universitario. Why change anything? Jer Marufo had the Tigris Saprisa round of 16 game. His father over 400 games as a referee in Mexico's Primera Division before League MX. He said he could hear his father's tears of joy through the phone when he said, I'll be repping in the 2018 FIFA World Cup. He's the referee tonight, continuing what has been an incredible 18-month stretch for the American the native of El Paso, Texas. The Tigris starting lineup, they do make changes, and some due to injury, suspension. They're happy to get Chaka Rodriguez back, no doubt. They're... Very happy to get Chaka Rodriguez back because I'll tell you what, Carlos Salcedo was nothing short of a nightmare at that outside back position in the first leg. And it's not because he's a bad player, but he's just not quick enough to keep up with the likes of Darlin Pavon. So in steps Jesus Duenas, the jack of all trades, the Jesus of all trades, and he just does a phenomenal job wherever he is on the field. But Jurgen Dom starting, question marks all over that. He was mediocre at very best in the first leg. If you're going to start somebody who hasn't really started this entire tournament, why wouldn't you start Zinyak? And according to Tuca Ferretti, his 90 minutes against Pueblo over the weekend, infinitely better than what we saw, and infinitely improved physically state in those 90 minutes. Why wouldn't he be starting? He's on the bench, though. He is on the bench. Number 10 for Tigris. What kind of impact could he make? Away goals don't matter, so if it's level at the end of regulation, we play 30 minutes of extra time and coming off a knee injury... Are they a bit concerned about showing their cards too early? I mean, why do you need to be scared of that? I mean, that's my that's my biggest thing. It's a final. It's the second leg of a final. It's your biggest rival on one of the biggest stages in the region, not in just the w region, but in the world. Go ahead and get your best players out there. But if they can get it done, like Tigris has gotten it done, and that's the biggest thing, Mike, is that if you have an inform enter Valencia and Eduardo Vargas, you can beat almost anybody in this region. But you're not just playing almost anybody. You're playing Monterey, who are just as good as you, and they've proven to be, if not better, in the first leg. For Monterey, goals in 40 of their 45 games all time in this tournament. A goal could be massive. Way goals don't matter. Two goal lead could be enough. Tigris Monterey, it's the final we all dreamed of, the one we hoped for, it's the one we got. Classico Regio, 120, the Champions League final in 2019. With Tyler Terrence, Mike Watts on hand, Monterey a 1-0 lead, Nico Sanchez a, a brilliant thundering header. Around halftime in the first leg, Estadio Universitario, and the parallels could be very obvious in short order. Should Tigris get a win here? That 2017 Apertura final between the two sides. And I already just like the pace better from Tigris than what we saw in the opening moments and basically throughout the entire game of the first leg. Valencia. Ayala. Rodriguez. Turn could spearhead a notable adjustment to this dangerous back line and Funes Mori diving in. And I'll tell you what, I do not want to be in his shoes tonight because it was more than difficult in the first leg to try to control everybody's emotions. Some trouble could be brewing here. Free swinging his finger around, saying no foul. And up comes Hurtado, missing Pizarro. Tato is one of those X-Factors for Diego Alonso in Monterey. If he plays well and he's clean and efficient in the attacking third, then this Monterey team is almost unstoppable. Carlos Rodriguez. 22-year-old reverses field.
Sanchez from goat to a very different kind of goat in short order. Vargas is down. He's the one who had spun out on the previous challenge. Well, he's pointing to the holes in his socks that he garnered after that challenge. He's pointing to more than that, isn't he? Marufo trying to move this along a bit. Carries his family with him everywhere he goes. I can't say I've ever seen that before, but I'll tell you what, it's a very nice tribute, but last thing that Tuca Ferretti wants is to have to make a decision on whether or not to take Vargas off, but you don't have a bad substitute waiting in the number nine spot. Vargas, the Chilean, scored four times against Mexico in Copa Centenario. Went from QPR on to Hoffenheim before joining Tigris in 2017. There's the earlier challenge. I mean, there's nothing in it, and that's why Sarah Marufo didn't make a call. I mean, Vargas was more or less initiating the play, and he obviously appears to be fine. But it's interesting, Mike, you have in the first minute and a half of this game, something to totally stop the rhythm and take and take the sting out of the game, which we did not have in the first leg whatsoever. I mean, everybody was flying at 150 miles an hour. And it'll be interesting to see how the two teams are going to settle in. I would say that this probably plays into the hands more of Tigris than anything, because Monterey turned the first leg into a bloodbath and they were successful. Tigris want to put the ball down and play. Dina further by Funes Mori, and it's away from Pabone. Well, Paul Guzman doesn't get the most riveting applause from this partisan Monterey crowd. Boy, were the goalkeepers spectacular in the first leg. 12 combined saves between the two. Vargas couldn't turn on it. Turned over, Pizarro, and hang on, Quinones. Covered by Rodriguez, and here's Pizarro. What a star he was last year for Chivas. Best young player in the tournament, leading Guadalajara to a title. He's just a star in general. Yes. I mean, this guy is, he is a general in the middle of the field, and it doesn't matter where he's playing, what position he's playing. He's best at number 10, but... I mean, this guy pulls all of the strings, and he's just a flat-out winner wherever he goes. That's why he's already won this tournament before, and he's got Monterey to another final. It's over Pizarro. He's trying to mark his man. We'll see what uh, Dom can put together. Come all the way back to Marcelo Baravero. 35-year-old Argentine. Over 100 appearances in international cup competitions with his clubs over the years. Both of these keepers are terrific. Both very experienced. They command their area. They're confident coming off of their line. And well, you have to be this in order to be a good goalkeeper at this level. They're great shot stoppers as well. Pizarro chipping into space, eating ball. Tottle won't get there. Pressure continues. Sanchez way upfield helped to turn it over, and now Tottle goes to ground, and Tigris carries the other way. And that's where Tigris needs to be careful, because they've done it out on this right flank already, and that's the same flank that Monterey gave them all sorts of problems. Is They have to be a lot more sure with the ball, especially when they have it, because... If you're going to turn the ball over against this Monterey team that had the likes of Pabon and Funes Mori waiting on the other end, it's going to be a long night. Well, an unforced error by Sanchez. Monterey 17 unbeaten in decisive games at home in the Champions League. And it's been a very impressive start for Diego Alonso his time at Monterey, having come over from Pachuca, led them to a title against this Tigris side two years ago. Medina steps in and follows through with his forearm. 
And that's exactly what I was referring to at the top of the show, Mike, is that Medina coming from the center back position at midfield, making sure that a central midfielder can't, can't turn. I mean, that is straight from the horse's mouth and Diego Alonso in terms of what they're trying to accomplish in the middle of the field. I thought you were the horse's mouth. <laughs> a team that that likes to possess the ball so much the more physical it gets you, you imagine that it is Monterey's game plan it is and when Tigres have time on the ball when they're comfortable they look like world beaters but but you could say that about most teams that have the quality that they have right if you give them time and space on the ball they're going to look good and they're going to pick you apart so what do you do you close down time you close down space and you make and you make them figure out different ways to beat you and Tigres last week could not figure out a different way to beat Monterey when they were coming with all that pressure Salcedo bodying up Pizarro all turned over that's terrible Hurtado Hurtado chipping across Funes Mori laying that off maybe should have had a goal Gallardo was there if they've been let off the hook they have Celso Ortiz off target. That's poor on both ends. That's a poor giveaway. And then the decision from Funes Mori, I will never understand this. You're up there to score goals. Take a touch and hit it. It's the opening 10 minutes of the game. Put one on frame, make Guzman make a save. You're 12 yards out. I mean, the space was already closed down by the time that the ball got to Funes Mori. He just needs to let that one rip. in Guido Pizarro. Valencia. Over the top. Funes Mori giving chase. Holding off Ayala. Funes Mori, if he can turn around, he had Pizarro instead fighting away Salcedo. His clearances have been iffy at best from Tigris. And now a foul in midfield. And the physical play continues, Mike, but I mean, you mentioned it, the, the turnovers in the middle of the field, and it's Carioca and Guido Pissarro specifically who are making these turnovers, and these are supposed to be your sure things in the middle of the field. 28, 29 years old. You've been here, you've done that, except win this tournament. But to give the ball away like that when you don't have anybody pressuring you, you have options available, much more simple options than you're trying to accomplish. Connect passes, get out of your own defensive third. I feel like we're watching the same game in the first 10 minutes that we saw last week. Miguel Lyon has put everybody on notice that there is no area of the field from which he can't strike. Lyon dipping ball. Recovered by Rodriguez. His touch a bit heavy. Mayoka seeding space and... Foul. That's a high boot. Yep. That's a bit naughty. That's exactly what this first leg was all about as well. I mean, every single 50 50 ball is life and death. You want to final any other way? I mean, theoretically, that's how every game should be played, but you, you wouldn't have many players standing by the end of the season. Choose your battles. Luania is setting it upfield. Falling to ground. Inones. Ayala. Salcedo. Well, here's the speed. This is the very best of Jurgen Dom. Dom did get the cross away, and he was hampered while he did it. Recovered by Baravero. It's a good early sign from Jurgen Dom. It's no secret that he's one of the fastest players in the world, but the part that's been concerning for everyone is the final piece, and that's the delivery. He's going to get by anybody he wants to get by, but it. It's, not, it's no use to Tuca Ferretti if he can't pick out somebody in the, in the middle of the box. And that's what he failed to do in the first leg. That's what he's failed to do throughout a lot of his career. But he's still done some incredible things in his career as well just because he is that fast. Ayala got a touch that. Funes Mori 
Williams appealing for the deflection. And he has won a corner for Monterey. And these little pockets of the game, Mike, I mean, this is, this is what I've been trying to say is that everything moving forward for Monterey seems so much easier, so much cleaner, so much more efficient. When Tigres are trying to move forward, everything looks painful, and it looks like it's so much more work for Tigres to get into Monterey's defensive third than vice versa. Marlon Pabon. What they come up with on the training ground this week. Nothing of note. Linus knocks it away, and this could turn into something for Tigres in short order. Nobody closing this down. Finally lifted by Vargas. And you know what? I'm totally okay with that because the runs that were being made on either side of him were rather pedestrian. There was no ingenuity behind it. There was no creativity. And Eduardo Vargas, I mean, he is a marksman. He's a goal scorer and he's a go-getter. He grabs the game by the scruff of the neck. Watch him here. He's going to one little bait, faints him out. And then he goes for the chip, and he sees that Barovero's off of his line, and that's okay, because you're going to need in a final at some point in time some sort of great individual effort, given the way that it's gone so far in the opening. Uh, my math isn't that great here. 103 minutes between the two sides. Seems spot on. Took me a little bit. High passing Pizarro. This will run all the way to Guzman. Fire it out to Rodriguez. with Tato. Tato pushed by Quinones. It's a calm and settled Monterey side at the moment. It was Mori dropped in and well, Babon forgot something. He checked underneath his boot like he left a couple of studs in the locker. It's a rare miscue from, from a man who has been nothing short of spectacular throughout this entire tournament, throughout his entire career. I mean, he was beyond sharp in the first leg, and I was shocked he didn't get a goal. Guzman made a couple of very, very good saves, but, I mean, he's been excellent. And if you listen to the Mexican press, you'd think Roland Pabon was on the way out with Diego Alonso after what was a, a, apparently a loud altercation Verbally conceding five times between their five goal outbursts against Sporting Kansas City against Toluca. Clearly, all's forgiven. The captain's armband tonight. And Vargas has drawn the ire of the referee again. And Vargas just realized it's not going to be get the ball. And to be completely honest, it's a bit soft going down from Ortiz, but he senses Vargas is behind him. An easy decision for the referee. Salcedo. What does Pabon have here? Funes Mori. Pabon laying it off, looking for Pizarro on the square ball. Salcedo lifts out of harm's way. Great defending from Salcedo. That's where he belongs in the middle of the defense. He is not an outside back, and that's where Monterey exposed him last week. Pabon, early ball! That's knocked away by Guzman. That was nearly a devastating own goal. And if not for cat-like reflexes, Tigris has been spared their blushes. And this is why Guzman's one of the best keepers in CONCACAF. He is always on his toes. He is always ready. This is an unbelievable save. It won't go down as a save. But this, I mean, the fact that he was even ready to make that is, is incredible. Babone, Sanchez and Funes Mori both into the air. Pizarro, those hoping to get that away in the 17th minute. 
it's so similar to what we saw last week. So many self-inflicted wounds from Tigres. It's not 100% Monterey just being better than them. Pizarro. Cutting that back. Attempt to recover that. Ultimately put out by Ayala. Pizarro. Rodriguez, who has won trophies with both clubs. The only one who could say that. Inones. Looking for Dom. Vargas pushing in. And those are the types of mistakes that I'm talking about because you've just been battling pressure. Guzman has to make this save. You kind of are scrambling at the back. Pizarro did a great job of taking the sting out of that sort of counter from Monterey, getting the ball out wide, and then Quinones decides to try to play a Superman ball on the other side. Get it to the middle of the field. Don't bypass Pizarro. Don't bypass Carioca. And let the game progress naturally. trying to finally remove the thorn from their side. Three Champions League finals in four years now. Trying to avoid infamy of having lost all three. Trail of Golden Hill in the aggregate. This is a little more in themselves for Tigris, but then they do indeed turn it over again. They left themselves exposed. It was Mori. Vargas chased by Ortiz. Vargas finally impeded. And he's the only player for Tigris right now that looks like he wants to go and win this trophy. He's the only one I'm seeing that's being brave, being bold, trying to make something happen. I mean, he's the best ball carrier on their team, and that should be said. But at the same time, where's the, where's the Quinones that we've seen throughout this entire tournament that's been running at defenders, that's been trying to make something happen, being creative in the attacking third? Where's Jesus Duenas getting forward from the outside back position, whipping balls into the box? And again, a lot of credit to Monterey for what they've been able to do tactically on the defensive side of the ball. Try the right hand side now. Carioca. Duenas. Valencia and Vargas awaiting middle of the field. Carioca. And that's the first time you've called Valencia's name tonight. And it's because he was standing in a decent position yep. more than anything. All for Dom. Challenge from Gallardo. Be a goal kick. Dom is appealing for more. He's not going to get it. You can see all the potential in the world in Dom, and there was a time where he was highly sought after, but hasn't really seen a ton of time in League MX this year. He's dealt with injuries over the years, and ultimately, I do wonder if he's ever going to reach the potential that so many had transcribed for him. It's a good turn by Quinones. Quinones squaring this up. Dom was coming in, and ultimately that's put out for a corner. And this is what we've been waiting for for Tigres for the first leg and the first 21 minutes of the second leg. Quinones, Vargas, Valencia running at these Monterey defenders. I get it. Jesus Gallardo and Miguel Ayun are great outside backs. The two of them started the most recent international window for El Tri. But they're not Superman, they're not invincible. Run at them, make them make a decision. Quinones will have to wait, do this again. Jeremy 
Rufo stopping play. Hargis will trade places. The signal has changed. Now Quinones. That's back set. Uh-oh, trouble. Ultimately recovered by Barovero. Fire that forward with two hands. Monterre could have a numerical advantage here. Coming in Pizarro to break play up. If they were a bit more clinical, perhaps Carlos Rodriguez was through. That's well done from Guzman. Trying to force his way in Dom. Leonardo. finally settled over the top Pizarro this will drag him a bit wider than he wanted three striped shirts down goes Pizarro well this could be the moment for Monterey How deceptive is Pizarro? And this has to be on the scouting report. These teams have played each other enough. Pizarro has been around Liga MX. If you're Chaka Rodriguez, you can't fall for that in the penalty area. Even if he does drag it back, it's on his weak foot. He's headed towards the byline. You have it covered. There's no reason to go dive in and win the ball there. Go deny the service, lick your wounds, and try to defend a corner. But again, it's Pizarro we talked about. He's a star. It doesn't matter where he plays, on the field, whatever team he's playing for. This guy finds a way to get it done. He's clever. He's calm on the ball no matter where he is on the field. And Monterey deserved this opportunity to take the 1-0 lead. I don't know if it should be from the penalty spot. It definitely was a foul. But they deserve the lead at this point in the game. What a story this could be. The fifth penalty Sanchez has taken in this tournament. He has taken more penalties in this tournament than anybody this year. He has scored three. It's been his last three. He missed one in the second leg of the opening round, the round of 16 against Alianza. It looked like that could ultimately end in penalties. But a late chance on a controversial call sent Monterey through. Now a chance to take a two-goal lead. He went left twice in that Alianza game. He's also gone right before in this tournament. Sanchez and Guzman, what a moment this could be for Monterey. Sanchez, right down the middle. Two goal lead for Monterey. His fifth goal of the tournament, his fourth from the spot, his second of this final round in the Champions League. Now they're being a header in the first leg at Estadio Universitario. Well, it's not the greatest of penalties, but he's deceptive. Gets Guzman leaning runway, goes the other. Simple as you would like. And he caught a lot of flack after the nil-nil draw against Alianza because he is one of the leaders on this team. And he said, anybody who expects us to win every single game every time we step out on the field is kidding themselves and has never really watched this game before. And since then, since that draw against Alianza, his focus in particular and his ability not only to defend and keep clean sheets, but to go ahead and score goals. This is a guy who has 16 goals across all competitions. Your center back has 16 goals across all competitions. It's unfathomable. The flag is down. Funes Mori. Funes Mori, the cutback. Can he finish? No, Guzman off his line. Closed it down. Monterey nearly tried to put a nail in Tigris's coffin in the opening half an hour. That's right, fan yourself off.
Well, you thought that maybe the goal from Sanchez would be a wake-up call for Tigres, that they're going to again miss out on this trophy. But it only proves to be a launching pad for Monterey and for this crowd. Pabon gets right off the chest. Pizarro and Sanchez had gone up and over the defender. He almost jumped out of the steel giant on that. That was pure adrenaline. Here's the penalty again, and he doesn't hit it cleanly. I mean, if Guzman dives the right way and makes that save, and Monterey goes on and squanders this lead, I mean, Sanchez turns the villain again, but fortunately, able to get him going the wrong way. What I'd pay to be a fly on the wall right now. Tuca Ferretti's bench. Dom sliding down. Get away from Valencia. He's been the talisman for Tigres in this tournament. Goal a game in this tournament. Here comes Hurtado. Tigres haven't been tidy back here. Followed up by Guzman. It's the guillotine over Tigris, isn't it? This uh, lack of an international trophy. They've talked about bringing that star to their crest. And a team with a lot of really impressive history over the years. And it's just the, the brass ring that's eluded them. Here they are again, not playing the very best. Um, there's nothing there at all. Well done from Carioca. And again, it's just everything for Monterey seems effortless. Everything for Tigres seems like a struggle. You have to find a way to continue to get Eduardo Vargas in 1v1 situations. And you also have to find a way for Ender Valencia to get a touch on the ball. I mean, this is the guy who's leading the Golden Boot race, although being tracked down quickly by Nico Sanchez as we speak. He's got to find a way. If you're not going to start Zinyak, and you're going to have Valencia and Eduardo Vargas up there, he's got to get touches on the ball. Dipping ball over the back line. Steered aside. Funes Mori into the middle. Headed down and wide by Salcedo. Well, it's going to take something for Tigres to get over the hump and back into this final. And perhaps that set piece could have been the trigger. He's so settled. Tuca Ferretti, and yet there are those moments where he can fly right off the handle. He's a very entertaining fellow. Is he settled, though? <laughs> it's a lot of smoke and mirrors with Tuca. I really don't know if he's settled. He might lead you to believe that, but I think there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Guzman heaves his penalty area. It's like the ultimate dichotomy. Diego Alonso celebrating a goal, and seemingly Tuca Ferretti existing while a goal occurred. You would think that Tuca Ferretti is watching the opera while he's coaching a football game. I mean, very discerning. It's just, it just doesn't look. Sometimes he just doesn't look happy to be here. I think he'd be a lot happier if the scoreline was reversed. Alas, I won't find Pabone. It's a hopeful threaded ball. Um. Burning the candle at both ends. We'll get out to touch. The good news for Tigris is that away goals don't come into play. And it's only two. If you get a goal before halftime, I mean, this second half is going to be more than bumpy. It's a well-won ball. Medina. Funes Mori's been a great outlet. Funes Mori sliding that. Perhaps he was going for the near post. Perhaps he didn't hit it right. He didn't hit it right because he took up about a third of the field. 
here at the Steel Giant. We saw Jurgen Dahm earlier sprinting and the, the field just coming apart behind him. The groundskeepers are going to have some kind of job this coming week. The ball hasn't been moving as quickly and as smoothly as I would expect it to be at this type of a stadium for this type of moment. Again, you know, this is at the end of the 2018-19 campaign for this team, and this field has seen, has seen some better days. But there's been a couple of moments where it has been a bit choppy, but for the most part, it has been smooth sailing. I'd imagine instead of trying to water the field, Monterey would much rather throw sand down in the hours leading up to this game. <laughs> it almost looks like they did. Monterey won Tigris nil in this second leg of the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League final. It's 2-0 in the aggregate. This is the final hurdle en route to the Club World Cup. Holding it up, Quinones. Lyon knocking it out. It'll be a Tigris corner. Sato almost scored from the last one. A bound out toward Vargas. Vargas keeping this. Salcedo. Salcedo's got company. Now he'll let it rip. Well, the goal scorers are all saying I was, I was available. They were saying that they're available, and I understand that you don't want your center back to be taking that shot in that moment. But if you give the ball to Quinones, if you give the ball to Dom there with their backs to goal, defenders right on their rear end, like nothing good is going to happen out of that. The ball needs to go on frame. It needs to go on frame, but the shot needs to be taken. Stuff by Lyon. Pabon, Pizarro, Funes Mori, he, he acted that out himself. It's a three-act play. It's with the referee leaving play on. Gallardo. It's got to be better for Vargas there. And the foul by Dom. And that's what Tigres can't do for these next 60 minutes or so, is just let frustration boil over and moments like this where you don't need to commit a foul, where you still have the opportunity to press and win the ball in Monterey's defensive third. Keep your composure, keep your head. It's a two-goal game. How many times have we seen in this sport, or how many times have we seen these two teams score two goals in a matter of minutes? It's more than doable, but you have to keep your composure. You have to find a way to break down this Monterey team if you are Tuca Ferretti, because everything you've done up until this point has been an utter failure. by Ayala. A couple of uh, Mexican players that could be in Tata Martino's crosshairs leading up to the 2019 Gold Cup. The groups are out. Mexico trying to reclaim the crown they had four years ago. United States winners in 2017. They'll be back in the final. Hot take. It, is it now? <laughs> Not if Jamaica has anything to say. I haven't quite parsed out the bracket yet to see where that all amounts to, but it seems like Jamaica has done well these last couple of uh, turns. They have, but. Mexico is not going two Gold Cups in a row without getting to a final. That I promise you. Especially if they have guys like Rodolfo Pizarro, Miguel Layun, Gallardo. I mean, how many L3 players do we have playing on the field right now? It's obscene. I think there's many who would say that's why these two teams have uh, eclipsed everybody else. Valencia. They're both looking up at Lyon in the League MX standings. What an incredible winning streak they had to pilot their way to the top. And I haven't had the opportunity to watch them as much because 
you know, Monterey and Tigres have stolen the show from the League MX side of things. And I asked some people, I said, are they really that good? And they just said they are on just an incredible run of form right now. And they very well could be here at this point next year. Ayala, four times a champion in League MX. Vargas. Rodriguez. Chaka tucks inside, leaving Dom to his devices. Dom circling in. It's off of Carlos Rodriguez. I'm not sure whether Gallardo was expecting the whistle to be blown, but he just flat out conceded possession to Tigres. What's he going to pay for? Rodriguez. Valencia may have been trying to steer that off of Medina. Successful. Well, this is the, the true storyline here. Gignac is healthy and ready to go. Aquino, noted forward option. This is a Tigre side that has all kinds of firepower available should they trail latter stages of this game. They could even make changes at the half. I'd be shocked if they don't bring on Zinyak at the half and the scoreline is still 2-0 on the aggregate. Shocked. Because he's just a guy who needs as many chances as possible. And the simple theory here is get him on the field as quickly as possible so he can have as many chances as possible. It's like a great challenge from Vargas. But you can't be happy that Vargas is more than half a field away from the goal mouth. You have to do what you have to do, but that's not a telling sign that Tigris is implementing what they want. It's not a telling sign, but in, in games in this tournament specifically, because where Zignac has not been playing and he's forced to come all the way back, he's done it and he's done it very well. Quinones, this is a long run. Zaro has stymied that run, taking the ball right away. I just love the way he plays. Always has his head up, always looking to make something happen. And if there's nothing to be done, quick outlet moves up the field and puts himself in a position to move further up. Reported transfer fee of $15 million. That's cheap. A lot of effort from Valencia to get the ball. He has won it. And he's taken a corner away. Ortiz bodying him up. And another set piece for Tigris to try and make something of before the half. And that is the definition of making something out of nothing because Valencia was going nowhere and just found a way. I mean, that's a veteran player making a veteran move. But now it's just a matter of Tigris have had corners. They've had set pieces. They've had that one great chance from Salcedo. Can you find one and put pressure on Monterey? Known as the Colombian. Trying to clear the approach to the ball. Quinones. Second bite at the apple. Quinones, Pizarro the target. Side by Pabon. Tato has to honor that. He'll force his way through the door. Oh, he's gone right through the legs. Rodriguez. That's, that's incredible from Hurtado. 1v2, finds a way to keep it. And what, look at Pizarro. <laughs> Pizarro is fouled. That's going to be a yellow. Pizarro had a very similar run against Sporting Kansas City in the semifinal that dropped every, draw, every jaw rather in the joint. See ya. See you at the podium while I'm collecting my trophy again. That's nasty. 1v2 again. And that should say that that's a microcosm of what's been going on. Tigres have numerical advantages, but Monterey are literally willing themselves into winning positions. Picks up the yellow card. 
It's going to be academic unless he does get sent off. And accumulation is a fool's errand to tabulate now. Lyon well defended. Pabon. Sanchez. That should be a card. And it is. Lyon well aware. <laughs> One thought on Lyons mind there, and that was stopping the counterattack that was rapidly ensuing for Tigres. Lyons time at Watford. He's in Syria. Ultimately went through Porto and Sevilla and Villarreal after a stint in Club America before arriving this year. Lyons, a veteran of multiple World Cups. Something here for Duenas. Brought down by Valencia. Just to widen out just to try and keep this alive. Well, the frustration is evident right now. And at some point, if you're Tuca Ferretti, you have to say to both Chaka Rodriguez and Jesus Duenas, you have to get further up the field. Not entirely sure if that's what he's writing down on his magic whiteboard right now. But the delivery of Duenas, and we were talking about this before we came on air, it's invaluable. But he gets more of those opportunities when he's in the middle of the field than in further positions up the field. And you just have to be more daring. It, you're down 2-0 on the aggregate in a final against your bitter rival. Go be brave. Go make something happen. Go make Monterey think twice about moving up the field. Because if you were to look at this game, from 30,000 feet and you had no idea what the scenario was, you wouldn't know that it's a final and that Monterey's up 2-0. It's not like Tigres is scrambling and has that sense of urgency you would expect them to have. I hope that's what we see in the second half. Hope we also see Andre Pierre come on at the half. Taken away by Hurtado. Great strength from Funes Mori. Hurtado drawing the defenders. If he had gotten that through, Funes Mori was alone. Pizarro. We're into first half stoppage time. Pizarro, again, trying to work with a bit of flash. Only one minute at a time. I, I will say there is an element of, of being a bit taken aback by Tigris's blase attitude at, at present. That same token, I don't imagine they're going to go to the, the dressing room and get somewhere between a tongue lashing and a, a total tactical recharge. I knew you enjoyed your time in France, blase. I went to go experience the land of the Gignac. <laughs> oh, this is potentially significant. A yellow card literally in the last seconds at the end of the first half. Who knows whether or not they'll come back to bite him. It's silly. You have one foot in the dressing room. And, and one foot on, on Gallardo. You beat me to it. <laughs> That's Quinones. That doesn't feel good. Well, it should take us to the half. Monterey's lead is double. Two goal aggregate advantage. And uh, the shooting offensive star we all expected, Nico Sanchez, has both goals in this final. 
And Monterey, Tyler are in fine position to carry their fourth Champions League crown out of the stadium tonight. And look at the difference between the two sides right now. Monterey comes together as a team, high fives for everybody, really positive. And yeah, it should be positive. They're up 2 0 on the aggregate in a final. Tigres, it's individual. They're barking at the referees, heads down, soaking, body language is bad, heading into the locker room. You could just tell that this Monterey side that has done this three times before, they look like a side that's going to go ahead and win it right now. Well, Tigres wants a dynastic end. They think this could be the crowning achievement. It's been a great run, but it's an all Monterey again. We've played 135 minutes in this final. It's Monterey to Tigris nil. That's the trophy they're fighting for, second leg of the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League final after a nine minute light show. And well, a perfect way to welcome the trophy back to Monterey. Out came the referees, followed by 22 players in the men's dreams in this grand final. And in this first half, Tyler Terrence, not, not good enough from Tigris. There were some bright moments, but moments like that seemed to erase all of them entirely. Well, it was moments like that where it just left you scratching your head. Okay, so you haven't changed anything, just, as, just from a mentality standpoint from last week, because I said to you after the first 15 minutes, it looks like we're watching the same exact game. Mistakes at the back, poor giveaways in the middle of the field, Carioca and Guido Pizarro being virtually non-existent, and then Guzman having to make a save on his own player. A diving header by Carlos Salcedo. And that's when things seem to turn a little bit into a more even game with a few less mistakes from the back. We saw some 
amazing work by Pizarro, including getting a penalty, and it's one that they would score in the 25th minute. And I'm still shocked that Chaka Rodriguez, as experienced as he is, fell for that. All the credit in the world for Pizarro for, for making that kind of move and that kind of play, and Nico Sanchez has just been on a tear this year from a goal-scoring standpoint, and he's not too bad at the back either. But I still can't believe Chaka Rodriguez dives in like that. I mean, listen, Tigres had some chances. Salcedo, your center back, had your two best chances of the half. What does that say about Tuca Ferretti's side and what they tried to accomplish in the first half? We see the continuation of Pizarro's dividends from the large investment Monterey made. Rioca picking up a yellow card, Lyon picking up a yellow card as well, and then Hurtado and uh, especially Funes Mori show bright moments in transition off these moments of, of struggle from Tigres. As at halftime, 1-0 to Monterey and 2-0 to Monterey in the aggregate for 135 minutes with 45 to go. We take a look at the halftime stats, Tyler, and, and what do you make out of what we see through 45 minutes? Obviously, Tigres' possession looks good, but what does it really mean, for one? The possession means nothing. Mm. It's not purposeful. What are you doing with that possession? You haven't challenged Barovero once. I mean, Guzman's had to make one save, but again, as, as, I, as we talked about, everything looks so simple for Monterey moving forward, even though that they're losing the possession battle, not by much. Everything just looks so effortless, and I just still can't believe that after the leg that they had in the first leg, that they come out and put on this kind of performance. The good news, again, is that you're only down one goal at the half, and you do have Andre Virginiak available, and again, I would be beyond shocked if he's not going to come on at half and he's not warming up right now. We welcome you back to the booth here with Tyler Terrence. Mike Watts on hand for this 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League final. Tyler, what did you make out of Monterey's first half? It felt like the, the first leg where they forced some mistakes and they were the better team through 45 minutes. They were the better team through 45 minutes. And again, it's the same thing that we saw in the first leg. You have the center backs and Nico Sanchez and Stefan Medina stepping up, making sure that the likes of Vargas, Chaka Rodriguez, whoever it might be, enter Valencia, Jurgen Dom can't turn and move up field. And then what we also see is Nico Sanchez, and you pointed it out once, is that Nico Sanchez will come up and join in on the attack. Not that Gadolfo Pizarro and everybody else needs any help, because Funes Mori and Hurtado and everybody have been excellent. But Monterey have just, again, tactically, Diego Alonso, I, I, would, I would venture to say, and this hasn't happened many times in Tuca Ferretti's career, he's getting out coached right now at, at, a, at, a, at an alarming rate. And head off of the neck and saying, I'm going to try to make something happen. We saw some brief stints from Quinones and him trying to do that, but it's been mistakes. Again, self-inflicted wounds. Why is Chaka Rodriguez diving in? Why are you making is this as simple as uh, let's make a personnel change, bring the best goal scorer in? Yes, it is that simple. <laughs> bring Zinyak on. He's one of the greatest goal scorers in Liga MX history, and he's scored some goals in this tournament as well. Bring half of this classical Rahil. Well, number 120 in this Champions League final after this.
did Tuca Ferretti have in mind at halftime? He did have the two changes that I think were on the forefront of everybody's mind. Kino will come on. It's the end of Jurgen Dom. It's a little overdue, to be completely honest. I mean, Aquino should have started this game. Yes. I don't think that Jurgen Dom proved anything in the first leg when he came on and they made that double switch. The double switch should have been Dom and, and Andre Pierre Gignac. It should have been the same exact thing. I mean, Gignac should have started, but we can we can sit here and play the what-if game all we want. But from, from an energy standpoint, from a goal-scoring standpoint, and just from a straight-up Andre Pierre Gignac being an absolute baller standpoint, this is exactly what Tigres needs because... Even an 80% Gignac, I'll go, I'll go a step further, a 65% Gignac can get at least one goal in this game. He is that good, he is that good in the area, and he just brings an aura to this team. I mean, he has been so well received by the city of Monterey, with the exception of Rayados fans, since coming to Mexico. He's a Mexican citizen now, he has two kids who were born in Mexico. This is his opportunity to cement his legacy and basically solidify him making the right decision and coming here and denying all the offers that he's gotten from Europe and those offers that he's gotten from Major League Soccer as well. Oman Alessandrini was trying to get him to come to LA Galaxy to play with Zlatan. He called that a, a beautiful partnership in, in mind. I'm one imagine, of reality. Can you imagine the Batman and the Lion? <laughs> Zignac's at the bottom of your screen there. He has scored six goals in 14 appearances against Monterey all time. You have a couple of, of daggers in mind here. Substitutions being announced. And the voting public in this stadium have made it quite clear that they weren't looking to see Andre Pierginiak at this moment. On to the second half. 45 minutes separate Monterey from a return to glory. A fourth Champions League title for Tigris. Is it yet another? Disappointing letdown after climbing all the hurdles. Ultimately falling short in the final for a third time in four years. Way goals are irrelevant. So should Tigra score twice, it would lead to extra time at a 2-1 scoreline. Aquino, as mentioned, comes on. Placing Dom. It's not really your goal scorer, but the man will provide the key pass to lead to it. And something else that Aquino does really well is that he's brave, as, and I've used this phrase a number of times, but it speaks true in that he also just loves to run 1v1 at defenders, and that's what Tigris need at the time. They need somebody to break that initial line of pressure because in Monterey have everything set up, and if the first player for Monterey wins that tackle, they're in a position to then go counter. If Tigris can break through that first initial, block of pressure, then they can start to make things happen. And Javier Aquino might be able to unlock some things for Tigres here in the second half. And that's a very clear welcoming party on Pabon. Stadium that opened in 2015. It's uh, supposed to be the biggest game they've hosted Alongside that 2017 Operatura final, it was 1-1 after the first leg at Estadio Universitario, but Tigres came and took the trophy away. A 2-1 win. Oh. Funes Mori slides down, play on. Usman comes off his line to start play up again. And I don't agree with the move of Vargas being sacrificed for Zignac. I think it should have been Valencia. Well, Zignac is fouled. And a yellow card shown. Yeah, it's Medina who senses that Zignac is going to turn. And that's one of those moves that Zignac has in his bag that even if you know it's coming, you're not going to be able to stop it. You just got to hope that you're going to be able to slow him down in some way, shape, or form. And for Medina, that form is fouling him fourth card handed out in this match. Our 
Rivero made seven saves in the opening leg of this final. Will it be finally called upon for the first time in this second leg? Carioca, a chance to recycle this. Duenas the backstop, Rodriguez. Duenas is fouled. If you're Monterey, you're just gonna try and gum up the works in this second half. And they're excellent at doing that. They're, they're all professionals, they're all veterans. They know how to kill a game. And, and that's why they've done this three times before. Carioca. Rodriguez, leading Quinones. Quinones for Valencia, back across. Well, Gignac had an idea. Ball didn't sit up just right for him. Marovero's got it. And you know what? We talked about a, a sub 100% Gignac and how he still can make things happen. If he's 100% fit, he doesn't think twice about this. Why is he pulling up like that? Does he think somebody's behind him? That, that looks like a perfect opportunity to pull that off, and he's only six yards away. Even if it's straight at Barovero, it's still probably finding the back of the net. That really makes me wonder exactly how fit he is, and, and I told you before we went on air, that quote from Tuca Ferretti, I, I don't 100% buy that. He said he is 100%, and he said that coming into this final, infinitely improved his physical state. After the 90 minutes he played against Puebla, of course, Tuca Ferretti had a bit of an altercation in that game with one of our personal favorites, El Chiles, Puebla, and both of them were handed match fans by League MX. Speak for yourself, personal favorite. Gignac will bounce away from him. Sanchez was pulling at his jersey. You have to start thinking about Sanchez in the, in the light of potential golden ball performance in this uh, this tournament. Two goals in the final and defensively defensively really a stalwart for Rayados. What a time to be a center back in world football. Virgil van Dijk being named the PFA player of the year in the Premier League. Nico Sanchez potentially going to take the golden ball. Zaro can't connect. Long way to go. It's going to feel like an eternity of 40 minutes for the Rayados fans and the Tigers fans. Every time they look up at the clock, they're going to feel like 10 minutes has gone by. Sanchez. Another by Pabon. Tato trying to work a quick interchange with Pizarro. Tigres will move into second gear. Locals don't care for Valencia. Valencia doesn't care. Valencia, this is onside. And there's the, the late whistle. Gignac is arguing with the head referee, Jair Marufo, but I don't know exactly what he's arguing about. didn't hit the ball. Be the argument. Yeah. So I didn't it, see that. It was, it was a bang bang play and I can understand why it might be difficult for the for the head referee or the assistant referee to see that. Grab my spectacles and see if <laughs> I can get, get a better look at that, no? On array unbeaten in the knockout stage in the history this competition that's seen a Mexican champion each and every time. Canadian side Toronto FC came as close as anybody. Montreal and RSL have come close in the last decade. Ultimately, Mexican sides have run a show. Gignac, that's too high. Be able to get to that. He's motioning to saying the delivery needs to be a bit lower. The same goes for the bicycle kick attempt that are non-bicycle kick attempt but just his presence and, and and he did this in the first leg as well just him coming onto the field if you're Diego Alonso 
you have to you, you swallow your pride and you say, OK, this is one of the best goal scorers that we've seen in this region for years. You have to play a bit differently. Nico Sanchez can't go 15 yards up and challenge Guido Pizarro and challenge Carioca in the middle of the field. Stefan Medina can't do the same thing. They have to be a bit closer to Gignac. So the whole dynamic and the tactical plan for Diego Alonso changes when Gignac steps on the field. It's been a magnet in the early going. A decent service. Funes Mori. Oh, he's gotten through. Pabone slide down. That is a clean challenge right through the legs of Pabone. I believe it was Aquino, and that was outstanding. take a titanic effort here from Tigris and moments like that could prove vital because it looked like it could get out of hand pretty quick. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. I mean of course the Rayados fans are going to be up in arms because it looks bad and Pavone sells it but if you're Javier Aquino you didn't have much of a choice because he's about to let that loose. I mean he times it to perfection. Monterey's aggregate lead, two goals to nil. All kinds of duress. Quinones. And the quality just lacking for Tigres in those big moments to break a line of defense for Monterey. Rodriguez. Header Gignac! Oh, that save is incredible from Paul Ferro. He's left it all on the line. He stretched himself so far that I think he's going to be feeling this for quite some time. Set eyes. The power that Gignac generates off this header is spectacular. The only thing more spectacular is the save from Barovero. He sets himself, he still ups, and he still is able to make the save. Oh, wow. And you had a feeling coming into this game that he was going to need to make at least, at the very least, one massive save. There's number one. One wonders if Mauro Vero have trouble here. He doesn't in this instance. To Is he compromised moving forward? I'll tell you what, Zinyak doesn't need any help, so that's a conversation that needs to be had between the athletic trainer on the Rayados technical area and somehow try to communicate with the back line or midfielder, whoever's closest to the bench, to see if he is all right, because you can't take anything for granted in this type of situation with this massive of a trophy on the line if he is hurt. Big if, but you've got those substitutes to yep. use. The problem is Luis Cardenas is your backup. He has played two games in League MX in his life there in 2016. There's the cross. Ball knocked loose. Barovero was fouled. He is taking a beating right now. Monterey players are in the face of the referee. An effort to try and protect their goalkeeper. It's Valencia who went into him. And it's brave from Valencia. It's even more brave from Barovero. It's a 50-50 ball. I don't see too much wrong with it. I mean, Valencia, he is a tad reckless in going in, and he doesn't make any effort to at least avoid colliding with Barovero. But again, in this day and age, keepers are always going to be protected, and Barovero knows that if he goes up for it strong, and he makes an effort, he's going to get the call. But he's paying dearly for it physically. You talk about having to earn a trophy. He's going to earn every centimeter. He won Copa Libertadores in 2015 while he was at River. Moved to Mexico in 2016. 
having played over 250 games in his native Argentina. Referee is counting the seconds. It's all time that'll be added later. Who knows what kind of heart pounding play remains there. He does not look in great shape between the shoulder, the hit he just took from Valencia. Cesar Montez waiting to make his entrance. It'll be a third center back. It would be, but I wouldn't be surprised if he comes on and replaces Medina just because Medina doesn't necessarily have the physical attributes that Montez does. Started that Copa MX final. Monterey pulled all the other goalkeepers over to lift the trophy alongside him. Ultimate team man who's played every minute of this tournament. Both goalkeepers playing tonight going the distance in this tournament. Has been there being the other. And that's the right call. Zinyak's going to be upset, but he never made an attempt for the ball there. And now that we've reached the hour mark. Well, here we go. Zinyak going at it. Pizarro. Now Pabon's in the middle of it. And this is beginning to look the part of the nasty rivalry that has existed between these two sides just eight miles apart, their home venues. And you see the respect between the two players, arguably two of the best players for their sides in Pavon and Andre Pierre Zignac. Again, Zignac doesn't really make an attempt for the ball here. He comes right up the backside. And whatever ensues afterwards is amongst players who weren't even involved in the play. I'm a bit surprised in this move of bringing off. I'm not surprised in the fact that they're going to bring off Hurtado, but. Why not bring somebody a bit more like on? It'll be interesting to see how Diego Alonso is going to play this tactically. If you're going like for like with Hurtado, you, you do have options there in a Maxi Mesa or a Angel Zaldivar, you know, a little more like for like. But truth, this is a now now winger for an out and out center back. And it looks like Montez is going to slide into the middle of the field and sort of act as another anchor and sit right in front of the back line unless Medina is the one that slides up there. One would imagine this is all part of the team talk at the half. The 2-0 aggregate remains. 25th minute goal, Nico Sanchez scored in the 43rd minute in the opening leg. It's two goals the difference. And then Pizarro hits rocked. It's a gifable reaction. Gifable? Did you come up with that? I, I'm, you're spot on. 100% is gifable. Te technical slang, <laughs> but it's not gifable. <laughs> I mean, it's fitting for Pizarro as well. I imagine the caption would be like when somebody says that they can cover me on the football pitch. Get a second chance at this. Ball whipped in. Oh, did that get across the line? Guzman wow. didn't let that over. Oh, Lyon put a lot of pace on that. and Oh, that didn't miss by much. I'm going to use one of your words. That is way too blasé from Guzman. Not for the first time tonight. I mean, that is it's nearly <laughs> a, a howler of epic proportion. Kino, 
Zinyak's turned away. Come away with the ball. Zinyak early. Ball bounces down. Not good enough from Quinones. If he hits that clean, he's in a wonderful piece of real estate. Zinyak was livid with the lack of response from Quinones after the fact because the ball was still alive and Quinones was still upset with himself for scuffing the opportunity. And Zinyak, rightfully so, is saying, keep going. The play is still alive. Duenas, square ball. Salcedo. Tigris have called this a priority for the institution. Gallardo turn this into a throw. Let's take a better look at this. Oh, <laughs> it's those two little baby steps that he takes back there that because right there, it's not, when he starts to drift a little bit, that's where I think that he gets mighty close to that whole ball going over the line, but I think that he's all right. I don't know that you need VAR so much as the, the Wimbledon ball in, ball out. Look, Medina knocks this away. Get the slow clap going beforehand. are not part of the equation tonight. Long throw over Pizarro. Salcedo. Carioca. Ayala. Pabon. Was he kept on side? He wasn't. And what they've done with Montez is just they've just planted him in the in the middle of that back line and they've just gone straight up five at the back. Second leg of a final at home. Up 2-0, why not? Possession lost by Aquino, and what's worse, commits a foul. Precious time ticks away. And more or less after every play, Zinyak is barking at his teammates because the quality isn't good enough. And he's 100% right. Because this isn't the Tigris that he's used to playing with and scoring goals for. But this is also a Tigris and a tournament that he hasn't been a part of. He hasn't started a single game. This is only a second appearance. And there is something to be said for having that caliber of a player and somebody who's such a massive part of your rotation and starts every single game, more or less, in League MX when he's healthy, but doesn't play in a competition until the final? And he, he had that banged up knee as well. Television coverage throughout the tournament is honed in on his box. High above Estadio Universitario. Catch a glimpse of him, good or bad, on the field. For Pabon. Struck the other way. Gignac to get by Montez. Flips him over. And that's unnecessary from Zinyak. The ball was already gone. He tried to judge the bounce. He actually did it really well. The only problem was that Cesar Montez judged it just as well. And Zinyak, I mean, that's... If he doesn't have that last name on his back, I think he gets a yellow there. Headed down, Pabon slips it through, Pizarro! That'll get away. Was deflected in route, corner, Monterey. Goalkeeper come off his line, and I think Pizarro is trying to whip that over his shoulder and into the net. And credit to Guzman, because watch, he never really gets back on his line. He's hovering right around the six, and Pizarro doesn't see Guzman coming off of his line until very, very late. Guzman gave Pizarro a tap on the hip. Pizarro returns the favor, and I think a bit of 
nastiness ensued, but again, as, as to be expected. Be another corner. Lundfumone and Monterey. Fabone, four 10 plus goal seasons in League MX. Drives the corner. What's most impressive about him, though, is his playmaking ability. And as he's started to get older, he's realized that he's not just going to beat everybody outright for pace. I mean, he's got 13 assists this season. One of the best playmakers in League MX and in this region. And between the Lasora and the Apertura. Long run here for Ayala. Kept that in, but at what expense? Bizarro bit of footwork. Funes Mori! Funes Mori trying to chip the keeper! Oh, he hit the post! Right off the crossbar. Couldn't do that twice if he tried. And then that's up and over. Well, because of the situation that Tigres have found themselves in, down 2-0 in a final, Nahuel Guzman, basically the entire second half so far, I don't think he's touched his goal line once. And because of that, Monterey is starting to pick up on it. Guzman, I don't know where he is. The effort from Funes Mori. A bouncing ball. It sat up perfectly. Sometimes it's a game of centimeters. Found every inch of that woodwork. I don't know why they keep booing him. He's more or less providing a lot of scoring opportunities for Rayados. Marioka breaking through lines. That's more like it. Time of the essence here. Under 20 minutes to play. Marioka steered aside with ease. Marikino. Marioka. Well, Tigris at this point have to say so long that Hugo Ayala knowing that they have to make some kind of tactical change increase the pressure until Rayon comes on. Zella Rayon has been one of those guys that's helped Tigres amidst this cup run in Liga MX in terms of rotation has helped them be able to still get results and still remain relevant and qualify for Ligia. He's done a great job of giving some of the bigger names a rest. Ryan to high ball drop by Barovero. And Valencia tried to slide that home. For as good as the goalkeepers have been in this tournament, there have been some real shaky moments. Some shaking of the crossbars as well. Well, all Kuzman can do is hope and pray, and his prayers were answered in that moment. Going. That is a beaten man. <laughs> I will give Barovero a little bit of credit, though, because I think that that slip up there is probably indicative of the shots that he took about 10 to 15 minutes ago. I think he's still a little out of his element and not feeling 100% because his body took an absolute beating for about a seven-minute span. Aquino. World's worth of time for Tigres. Top passing team in Mexico. Team that's second in League MX. Tied with Monterey. Goal scoring. They 
and turn it on late here. Change the narrative. Overcome what has been a crushing three-year stretch of two Champions League finals without ultimately taking the trophy. Aquino. Fan favorite. Getting a sturdy Monterey cheer. Unless somebody of that caliber has said or done something to your team that's outlandish, I don't see the need to just outright dismiss that person more or less as a human being in those types of moments. And yet, there's somewhere between a million, million and a half people in the city limits of Monterey. And you would still argue it is a 50-50 split as to who boos and who cheers that man. It is incredible, though, the way that the city, the club, the league, the country has embraced him. And not only that, but him flourishing as well. And, and becoming one of the greatest goal scorers that this country has ever seen from a domestic league standpoint, and just recently scoring his 100th goal. This is 160th appearance in Tigers colors. This is good work. Ryan, it's the cross, Quinones. Valencia, let that pop up on him. Honore could maybe put this thing away with one more goal. Funes Mori looking to turn the corner, instead faces up. Pabon, Pabon driving in! Barovero made the stop, make it Guzman rather. And boy, he stung his palms and ultimately his backside, it appears, is reaching toward his hip. Well, I thought the ball to Pavone should have gone out way sooner than it did. And Salcedo almost gets a touch to it. Once the angles close down, the only thing that Pavone can do is go for power. He strikes it cleanly. No movement on the ball whatsoever. And I think that's just a cramp from Guzman at the end because he gets a piece of that shot. There's really not much in it. And I just think that his body's starting to cramp up in 90-degree heat here in Monterey. Suing corner. Did the other way. All the changes have been made for Tigres at this point. Monterey has two subs to work with. Jonathan Gonzalez, 19-year-old native of California in the United States. And he's taken a back seat to Celso Ortiz in this final, but he started in every game leading up to this point. And just from a defensive standpoint, Ortiz brings a bit more to the table than Gonzalez, but that takes nothing away from the youngster and what he brings to the table. Well, that attitude remain in 13 minutes. It's a festive atmosphere right now. Funes Mori slipped over the ball. There's no need for that, rolling around and giving it theatrics because quite literally you don't have the time for it. It's Lyon, who had a yellow card previously. If he had made greater contact, this could have uh, the whole final on its head. Final moments. Carioca. Well, the good news for Monterey, if that were to happen, is that they, already, they have five backs in there right now. They wouldn't have to make any changes. Duenas. Brought down well. Lifted across. Zinyak is there. Punched up. Farrell got it. Off of Lyon. Yeah. 
This is impressive stuff. Square it up. They couldn't. Quinones has to touch it. And this Monterey crowd whipped into a fury now. Again, it's Barrovera putting his body on the line, throwing his weight into unknown places. Has no idea basically what's behind him. They can smell it. Guzman sucked in forward and spits it out the other way. Come back here from two goals down, be legendary for Tigris. Made by Medina. Monterey has not lost in Champions League in their extensive 45 sixth game and more than one goal. Here's the cross. Alfaro comes off, snatches it. Quinones felt like he was fouled, but to get that sort of call when the ball is 10, 12 feet above your head would need to be heinous contact. See a title winner two years running. Former Chivas man winning a giant transfer fee. Prize of the Mexican draft. Zinyak. Zinyak turning and striking. And one wonders if that's the best use of political capital with under 10 minutes to play. In most cases, I would say no, but take a look at what's gone on in the 170 minutes that we've played so far. Muster up nothing. And he did that in the first leg when he came on as well. I mean, he had his back to goal. He was taking shots when he was off balance. He was putting them on frame, unlike that one. But why not? Try to make something happen. Zaro. Well, this deflects back. Funes Mori in pursuit. Rolled out by Guzman. This field has not been kind to either team of late. Great switch from Guinness. Aquino's got to go with pace here. Aquino can't break down teams with the dribble. Guinness upfield. Valencia plays it over. A chance now for Tigris. Ryan, perhaps trying to square, perhaps going for goal. He's won a corner. And Nico Sanchez has been the best player in this tournament. There's no question about it. He's definitely been the best player in this final. Both legs now. Scoring goals, blocking shots, always stationed appropriately, commanding the back line. Goal for Tigris, and all of a sudden, they're right back in this thing. As time continues to tick, Monterey fans are just going to continue. Their upward trajectory, which one would be incredible high. Mesa on, final sub for either side. It's enough for Pabon. Corner Tigris. Bounces down, came off the player to Chaka Rodriguez, all the way out to Guzman. Valencia, can Valencia get there? Shielded well. And the growing sentiment towards Kiko Sanchez being the face of this tournament. He was the man there. A 
He took a he took a nasty sort of swipe from Enter Valencia. Monterey's used all three subs. They would have loved to have known this was going to happen about two minutes ago. It was on that head to head contact right there. I think once Valencia is trying to sort of swipe his way back into the play, that's when great job from the medical <laughs> staff for Monterey to get him back onto the field that quickly. It's been motioned on yet. Referee's looking that way. If you're Tigres, I mean, this is your chance right now. They only got four defenders, there's 10 players on the field. Go, go, go. Salcedo. There he is, Sanchez rushing back into position. Gignac! Forget everything you thought about this final. Gignac is turning on its head. 2 1 Monterey. Tigres have life. Unbelievable goal. Welcome to the craziest five plus minutes in CONCACAF Champions League history. Well, anybody who thought that this final was going to go down without the Batman, Andre Pierre Zignac, one of the greatest goal scorers Liga MX and CONCACAF has ever seen, is outside their minds. And you know who else is outside of their minds? Andre Pierre Zignac. He had time to take not one, not two, but three touches. But what does this man decide to do? Take it on the first time because they don't have any more time. Game on, let's go. His eighth goal in Champions League for Tigris all time. His first of the tournament. Off the mark from Quinones. Zignac played zero minutes before the final. He came on as a sub last week. You're hobbled by a knee injury. He scored an equalizer in the dying seconds two years ago against Pachuca. Nearly ripping it away, Diego Alonso's men. He was offside by a foot. And in the end, Gignac has now scored in two of the three CONCACAF Champions League finals that he's played in. Just knew something spectacular was coming. The aggregate is 2-1 Monterey. Both goals, Nico Sanchez. One in the first half of the first leg. The second, the penalty, the 25th minute. That's the difference maker now. The final marker would separate the two. 2-1 two Tigris line in this game would send it to extra time. Pizarro, that's clean play. Pizarro gets launched. Play on. That's the right decision from the referee. I like that. Some beverages flying out to the field. Mesa tossed. Quinones. Come back to that earlier spot. There is going to be one massive chance for Tigres. It's coming. It's it? coming. And it's a matter of whether Barovera is up to the task or if Tigres have the quality to finish it off. But there will be an opportunity. Tigres goes short, and here they come. Zellerayan, there's the cross. The side of the flag will this end up on? Corner. This is just stupid. <laughs> no, really. He had time to take that down, but he only had one thought on his mind corner it away by Montez one of the best goals in the history of this competition and if Tigris come back it is far-fetched where we were 10 minutes ago that it will live on forever in Monterey
He's not going to make the call now. Keep playing. Should be a fair amount of stoppage. There have been a couple of knocks in this half. Valencia slipped away. Montez deflected. Last, last thing you want is your center back taking three dribbles from your back line. Oh, great move to separate. Up the line now. Quinones lifted away. Sanchez first time. Celebrated. It's amazing how they have had some, I won't say easy, but they've had easier chances than what you saw from the Gignac goal, what you saw from Celerayan. But it's incredible to think that the Gignac goal went in and that that was their second best chance of the game. A full volley from 20 yards out. Monterey. Precious seconds. Again, when you just start to use the hands, you give the referee every incentive in the world to blow the whistle. I'd be very surprised if there's anything short of four minutes. Bench trying to say it's time wasting a foot four minutes. Your heart's not pounding out of its chest, it's in your throat. City transfixed by the 120th all time meeting between two of CONCACAF's greatest powers this last decade. Big four, perhaps not. These two skin sides to go the distance. There's beverages flying, benches converging, and the four minutes we thought were going to be... I don't speak Spanish. He's not a happy camper, and it was some of his bench players who were getting involved, and, and it took us 100% right to be that upset because you're in the most critical part of the game in a trophy that you've never won before. Don't waste time or do anything stupid from people who aren't even on the field. could imagine this getting toward 95 now. It's not a 40-second layoff. I'd also argue that was a bit self-inflicted, Tigris. That should have been Monterey Ball right there. Alas. Whole width of the field in play. Here comes Aquino, whipping at the cross! Barovero caught it. And he gets knocked hard. I have no idea what Salcedo is screaming about. And he should at least been given a card at this point, if not a red. This is 1,000% a foul on Quinones. Is the yellow to Salcedo. Salcedo was counting out the times he felt Barabero and knocked, but uh, that one clear as day. Well, the clock says a minute. I'm sure that that's all. Is there one more chance for Tigris? Is Monterey this close to their fourth Champions League title? Guzman has had some insightful moments in this second half. And he's had some that have left you real nervous. Has he done enough? The 
Tigris. It's about getting the right chance. He may not get the ball again. Carioca. Effectively shaking the ball side to side and created a inkling of space. Carioca. Aquino. Could this be it for Tigris? Aquino's created the space. Carioca lofts it across. Lifted away. Long run. Montez. You're that stayed in play. If you're Aquino and you see that defender go down, first thing under mine has to be delivery. Seconds left. Barovero has it in his hands. Instant classic. Monterey win the Champions League. Two months ago, they were minutes away from Roulette, the penalty shootout against Alianza. The Salvador inside took Monterey to the brink. And then they shot through the sky, a shooting star, all the way to the Champions League final. Their biggest rival awaited, and they've done enough. 2-1 aggregate winners, Rayados, four-time Champions League champions. The emotion from Diego Alonso says it all. And it, I think it's fair to say that coming into this final, they were underdogs. Given all of the names that Tigres have, and, and of course Monterey have names of their own, but the names on the other side of the field are world-renowned, are household names, not just in Mexico, not just in North America, but across the world. And Monterey, and you hit the nail on the head, because they were that close to going out against Allianz, and to be quite honest, I don't even know if they deserve to have those two opportunities that they did from the penalty spot. They got them, they got through. And what they did after that was to make the most of every opportunity that they were given. And they dismantled a Sporting Kansas City team that a lot of people thought was the one last great hope in MLS history. <laughs> MLS history, in, in this competition at least. It feels like history after the final aggregate. But, and then for Diego Alonso, who's already won this tournament before with a different team, to then put together a tactical game plan and outcoach someone in Tuca Ferretti who a lot to believe to be the best tactician that Mexico has seen in, in, in quite some time. That's what you're seeing right now, is the culmination of, of just an outstanding cup run. They're still alive in League MX, and they're going to be in League Ia. They still have the chance at the double. This is an unbelievable Monterey team that has bought into exactly what Diego Alonso wanted to do in every single leg, with the exception of the Al Alianza one, because that was the one where I thought that they got away from who they are. But everything else after that was close to perfection as you could possibly get. And there are so many players on this team that are responsible for the type of mentality that they have and that are at the center of all of it. Nico Sanchez, Darlin Pavone, the center backs who stepped in for Cesar Montes and Stefan Medina, Miguel Ayun, 
Jesus Gallardo, Celso Ortiz stepping in, really only getting his starts in the final and providing to be, and, and proving to be just an absolute anchor in the middle of the field for Diego Alonso. I'm enamored with the way that this club performed. Nico Sanchez still with his head wrapped, speaking after the game. What does this trophy mean to you and your team? It's for our people who so much needed this triumph. We too, but they also needed this triumph. They, all the people, people for our fans. For the people, for our fans. We needed to start with a championship like this, so it's for them. Had to start on the right foot in this stadium, he says, the one that opened in 2015, and they did. Para todos, todos sabemos que hay mucha gente que no puede venir al estadio. To the fan base. Por eso te digo que toda la gente que vive un estilo de vida de Monterrey, para ellos que sepan disfrutarlo, que lo disfruten con todo, porque nosotros no vamos a poder. The ones who came and the ones who didn't. Both a part of us. Gracias y felicidades. De nada. 52,229, as intimated earlier. Those who don't have a ticket will say they did. This temple, Monterey football, very much a, a different feel to this stadium than Estadio Universitario. It is not a repeat of that 2017 Retura final. Saw Monterey come tantalizingly close to a League MX title on their home soil. And watch Tigres come and rip it away. And you saw a brief moment. I don't want to take anything away from Monterey right now, but I do think it needs to be said. In that that little scuffle broke out right as stoppage time was announced. And that took about a minute. We ended on 94 sharp. Tigres do have a bit of a claim in terms of maybe there should have been one more minute added on. However, they only have themselves to blame because they had players from their own bench coming onto the field and, and getting in the face of the Rayanos bench. At that point, it's null and void because Tigres more or less made their bed and they have to sleep in it now. And, and the disappointing part for Tigres is that they came to this environment in the second leg of a final, and again got a result. If you look at their past two results here in the Steel Giant, in a final, 2017 Apertura, and now this, you have a draw and a win. What's the problem? You didn't get it done at home. It's as simple as that. That's why there are two legs. You got your opportunity in front of your, in, in front of your Tigris faithful to get off on the right foot, and you did not come to play. And you paid the ultimate price when it came to the second leg. And then you allowed Monterey to be in the driver's seat. And that's what's the most disappointing part for a team that's littered with stars, that has an enormous amount of talent, that has been chasing this trophy for now years, and again falls short in the final. For those who believe in alternate universes, there's the one where Andre Pierginiak was healthy through this final. You'll never entirely know. Just how close to 100% he was. One beautiful moment, all he could muster in this Champions League final. And Tigris, for the third time in four years, reached the summit and be knocked off at the last moment, this time by their most heated and hated rival. This is the kind of thing that will be talked about by water coolers and schoolyards bars and churches for a very long time. Monterey faithful, giving it back to those in the striped shirts, did just enough and to the Tigris, Tigris players, I'll wait this out. Their supporters in the upper corner of the stadium Watch as they receive their runners-up prize. Gal Lyon is in the wrong area of the field at present. Ian Guzman having it out. Man of the match was Barovero. And the award ceremony has begun with the Fair Play Award.
Sporting Kansas City will have that marginal prize. That'll act somewhere between another piece for the mantle and a doorstop. And it seems like the ultimate failure for Sporting Kansas City after their drubbing to the champions in Monterey in the semifinal, but they still got to their first ever semifinal in club history. They got to have a, a CONCACAF Champions League night at Children's Mercy Park for the first ever time. Yes, the, the aggregate wasn't great at the end of the day in the semifinal, but again, Major League Soccer slowly but surely starting to become more and more relevant on the stage. And But you can see the quality. You can see the difference between these League MX sides and the Major League Soccer sides. Last year, the best young player was Rodolfo Pizarro for Chivas. Now with Monterey, I believe he's aged out of that. Jonathan Gonzalez, the 19-year-old, the number six, a Monterey youth, the U.S. Youth International, off to Mexico, where he is already capped for the senior side. And he's a terrific player, and we mentioned it when he came on. He didn't get to start in this final, and he didn't play as big of a role as he did throughout the rest of the tournament, but that, that's tactics, and that's, and that's a veteran, and Celso Ortiz needed to step up and, and, and play in that role. But Jonathan Gonzalez and Carlos Rodriguez were stupendous when they were paired up together in the middle of the park. Well, Tigris receive their runners-up medals. And for many players, this will hang alongside two more. Let's say this. This is a team that has an unparalleled resume in Mexican football to not have an international title. And, and it's, it's an anchor that continues to hang around their neck at present. And they're going to be disappointed tonight. And yet, this is a very good team that could still very much go and win the Liguilla. They could, but from an emotional standpoint, and, and, and from what I saw tonight, I don't see it. I just don't. I, I mean, and that's the issue with it, and it's not an issue, but that's the reality of having these tournaments run simultaneously with your domestic leagues is that, and, and we see it a lot with Major League Soccer sides, and I hate to bring it up to that, but you see sometimes when you, when you reach that emotional apex, and Tigres have reached it here tonight, it's difficult to then bring yourself back up and throw yourself into another competition, which is what they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to dust themselves off, hold their heads high, know that they're still a more than quality side, and try to get it done. And he's gotta be at the center of all of it, whether he's healthy or not. He, he is the soul of this team. They go as he goes. Applauding the fans who did make the trip. The 20, 25 minute drive. Eight miles separate these two stadiums. Leon. Front office uh, puts in so much effort to build a team. Staff that works so hard to keep players healthy on the field and in the best position to win. Getting their reward for a job well done and a job left incomplete. For Tigris, four winless came at the wrong time in their season. Tuca Ferretti. Last to receive his reward. What a whirlwind year it's been for the interim Mexican national team coach returning to Tigres. The former Monterey man is a player in the 1980s. And it'll be interesting to see what his future is with this club, especially if they don't perform like you would expect them to perform in Liguilla. Marcelo Baravero. The best goalkeeper in the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League. And tonight, the save on Andre Pierginiak in the second half that proved most crucial. And I'm still just in awe of the fact that when he was trying to set himself, he slipped and he still got to the ball. He's, he's unbelievable. Diego Alonso counting on his 35-year-old veteran. Enter Valencia. Seven goals, the top scorer in the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League. From GOAT to GOAT, the best in the tournament. Golden ball, Nico Sanchez.
best player. Five goals, two in this two-legged final in the 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League. And he doesn't need that head bandage and that blood gushing out of his eye to know that he's a warrior at his, at his very core. He does everything for this team. The officiating crew led by a man who over 18 months has overseen a club World Cup final, a FIFA World Cup match, and now a Champions League final. Cher Marufo, a crew hailing from St. Kitts and Nevis and the United States. The trophy presentation is upcoming. It's a lift two years in the making. Rados have waited since their three-peat to receive these golden medals. They won it all in 2011, 2012, and 2013. They finished third in the Club World Cup in 2012. They'll have the distinct honor of representing CONCACAF in the World Cup again. And I'll tell you what, they're going to be a tough out at FIFA Club World Cup because they can defend, they got guys who can score, and we've seen League MX teams go into that FIFA Club World Cup and perform before, come in third place. It has happened. Obviously, they have to go up against some giants across, across the world, but they need to enjoy this every single moment, and it certainly looks like they are. Another Mexican champion. And Monterey can truly say they stand on the shoulders of giants. This new stadium had lacked a crowning achievement. It's arrived. Four titles in a decade. One can say now they're the most dominant team in CONCACAF in international play for the last decade. Until the semifinal, nothing was easy. The semifinal, one would argue, was. The final was the most difficult possible draw. What everyone thought when they saw the bracket, could Classico Rejo come to CONCACAF's biggest stage and brightest lights? It did. Ray rose to that challenge. And a skinny tied man with an unparalleled level of energy, Diego Alonso has piloted another side to international glory. And his playing career speaks for itself, but he's now establishing himself as a world-class manager as well. There it is. It's second year in its current iteration, this trophy. Not champions yet. Have to lift it first. The moment they've waited for. Monterey, 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League champions. saw the convoy of fans, Tyler, that made their way in this. Convoy or army? <laughs> it did look like an army, didn't it? Surrounding the team bus. Could have carried that bus in. The 
wasn't already floating, seemingly. And here they are now. Shimmering confetti. The latest homage to a team that is, said that they are somewhat of a superpower now in this CONCACAF region. were here hours in advance and they could be here for hours to come they could have a tough time getting everybody to leave this place I wouldn't want to leave Monterey undefeated at home in Champions League knockout stage games and it continues they have won five straight games in all competitions and they're 5-1 thumping at the hands of Toluca about a month ago has proven to be just the shot in the arm that this side needed. The reporters always get the, the short end of the stick in these celebrations. Is that the short end of the stick? I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in there yet. No. <laughs> Sharing in a moment that for some only comes once in a lifetime. Golfo <laughs> Pizarro knows just where to take that. Celebration continues. Biggest ticket expenditure in what's been a multi year shopping spree for Monterey. He was worth every penny, wasn't he? <laughs> you called him a bargain. I, I think there's going to be some teams in, in various places that would be willing to pay a handsome amount higher than what uh, Monterey did. He's still only 25. And that's the most shocking part of this all, right, is that he was named the best young player last year. He could have been named the best player. And I think that if Nico Sanchez doesn't have the performance that he did in these two legs, that Pizarro's also up for it. Because anybody who's watched these games, and is watched, particularly the final, knows that when it came to possession and being on the ball and just overall quality, Pizarro stood alone. I mean, Sanchez did so many different things, but... His were a bit more tangible in terms of the scoreline and his defending, but Pizarro was nothing short of outstanding. Got to keep your camel lens uh, out of the way here. Overhead view. Steel Giant. It's ground zero now for CONCACAF football. You could say perhaps Jurgen Klopp had big words to say about a, a big stadium before, but it's tough to put an atmosphere like this into words. It's certainly comparable to the great palaces of soccer around the globe. Riados winners, two goals to one over Tigris in aggregate. And as we welcome you back into the booth, Tyler Terrence, Mike Watts, our appreciation, all those who have watched 
all across the region over the course of this 2019 Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League campaign. Ty, let's, uh, let's break this one down. First of all, Tigris. You have to be disappointed. Three finals in four years. You have to be devastated at the result tonight. Maybe they weren't fast enough early, but uh, they did put up a spirited effort at the end. They put up a very spirited effort, and Andre Pierzynek was at the heart of that, quite literally. I mean, he was the one who came on, and forget his quality and his ability to score goals, and we'll talk about the goal a little bit later, but I mean, it's just pretty unbelievable he was able to come on the field and just sort of inject that life into them, but you talk about early. Let's go back to the first leg. They just weren't good at the first leg, and, and they got a result on the road in a final, but they just weren't good enough in the first leg to be able to get it on the aggregate, and Monterey, all the credit in the world to him, tactically far and away better. Well, incredible atmosphere, incredible night. Thanks for watching throughout this Champions League campaign for Tyler Terrence, our entire team, Mike Watts, saying so long, and we'll see you next year. Good night. Thank you.